Bless her. Okay, good morning, Chair Boschcomb. This is Mandy Sackett with the California, um, sorry, the California Policy Coordinator for the Surfrider Foundation, speaking on behalf of our 20 California chapters and thousands of supporters throughout the state. I am here today to ask you to consider Poseidon's Water's long history of dodging state desalination regulations and to consider their numerous and ongoing non-compliance problems and the lack of reliability before issuing the same company another permit in Huntington Beach. The plant began delivering 50 million gallons of water per day to San Diego County and is the nation's largest seawater desalination plant. Unfortunately, Poseidon continues to be an untrustworthy and unreliable actor. First, during the permitting process for the Carlsbad plant, and according to your own staff, Poseidon knowingly attempted to deceive the Coastal Commission with an inadequate greenhouse gas reduction plan, not once, but twice, in 2007 and again in 2013. Only under years of pressure did Poseidon finally purchase and retire the required cer certified carbon offsets to mitigate their first year of emissions. This is a strong and sadly characteristic indicator of their unwillingness to act as a responsible party. Another example of Poseidon deliberately attempting to skirt obligations is the company's marine life mitigation plan. Poseidon is required by the Coastal Commission and the Regional Board in their 2011 permit to offset their impacts to marine life from the Carlsbad plant through a 66-acre wetland restoration project with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Poseidon has been operating for two years now and has only now re released an environmental review port report for the project. The delays were caused by pa Poseidon's paid consultants who continuously offered insufficient proposals and inadequate science that was, of course, rejected under federal review. And this is, again, exemplifying Poseidon's resistance to conducting a thorough analysis and ac accepting agency recommendations and regulations. Now, even more egregious, Poseidon is continuously violating the Regional Water Board's discharge permit and has done so since operations began in 2015. In April of 2016, the San Diego Regional Water Quality Control Board issued a notice of violation finding that Poseidon's facility had failed to comply with several provisions of the permit, including failures to comply with discharge prohibitions, receiving water limitations, effluent limitations, failure to monitor in accordance with permit provisions, and in December 2016, the board issued a staff enforcement letter describing 19 occasions on which Poseidon had exceed, exceeded daily maximum toxicity limits. So I'm just going to break this down a little more. In its annual permit discharge monitoring report for 2016, Poseidon stated that it had exceeded chronic toxicity limits in 30% of tests. In 2017, Poseidon was cited for exceeding chronic toxicity violations in 36 out of 90 total toxicity tests. And so far in 2018, Poseidon has been cited for 11 chronic toxicity violations and one deficient monitoring violation and one category one pollutant violation for exceeding total suspended solid, solids effluent limitations. Poseidon has completed a series of toxicity evaluations to determine the cause of the chronic toxicity and recently released their final report this April. Unfortunately, the report is inconclusive. It rules out several potential direct causes, such as salinity and harmful algal blooms. The study found that certain chemical and polymer additives could contribute to toxicity fi findings at higher concentrations, and the study never actually tested the actual concentration of polymer additives in their final effluent. So the report concluded that the effluent is suspected to have low enough additive concentration levels that polymers wouldn't have a significant effect. But in the end, the report speculates that a confluence of polymer and chemical additives may be at fault. So several, several factors. Are. And since opening, Poseidon has been unwilling or unable to resolve this toxicity violation. However, in their toxicity identification report, researchers found that several treatments were effective in removing the toxicity, including additional filtration. So remarkably, the Regional Water Board is considering resolving this continu these continuous violations by eliminating this testing point in order to grant Poseidon's standalone permit. 
So you see here, Poseidon claims that these toxicity violations are a result of conservative testing by the Regional Water Board. They are occurring pre-dilution. So on the slide you can see location M001. That's where the testing occurs and it's pre before the brine is diluted. Once the brine is diluted in M002, the water samples no longer violate chronic toxicity limitations. Poseidon claims that there is no harm to the environment, but how can they say that when they don't even know what additives are causing the chronic toxicity readings? We don't know how these toxicants may accumulate at the outfall. The area along Carlsbad shoreline where the diluted brine and wastewater is discharged is abundant with marine life, rocky intertidal reefs, critical habitat. The Regional Water Board set these chronic toxicity violations at location M001 for a reason. We don't want this stuff going to the ocean, even if it is diluted, and Poseidon is continuously violating even that level is set. Harm is being done to the marine environment. So the bottom line is that this testing point was included for Poseidon in Poseidon's permit for a reason. This is not arbitrary as Poseidon would like to convince you. The testing limits established for chronic toxicity are listed as enforceable, along with other limits you see in this table on the slide in the Water Board's issued permit. On the other hand, there are non-enforceable limitations that would, should also be monitored at M001, such as salinity, a list of metals, and other chemicals. But like I said in our conversations with the Regional Board, they intend to resolve this issue under pressure from Poseidon by eliminating this testing site altogether. My point is, once these plants are built, concessions are made, and this much is clear. Poseidon is releasing diluted toxicants into our ocean, and Poseidon's own study clarifies that the brine is not just concentrated salt. Poseidon should be in violation, but the San Diego Water Board is not holding them accountable and has stated that they don't have any intention to issue another notice of violation despite these ongo ongoing violations. This is absurd. So, one way to potentially avoid these issues with chronic toxicity is to avoid chemical additives that are used in pretreatment altogether, which is exactly what happens when you use subsurface intakes. Pretreatment is not needed for subsurface intakes. <coughs> pretreatment is done to reduce fouling of membranes and increase permeate water quality. You can see the number of steps involved with pretreatment from open, open ocean o intake compared to subsurface intake in the diagram here. Subsurface is shown at the bottom of the diagram. Much fewer steps are needed. In a 2013 study, this diagram was created to show the reverse osmosis treatment process. The study surveyed seawater reverse osmosis plants located globally and found that in many cases, the water produced from a subsurface intake can be transmitted directly to the cartridge filters, thereby eliminating the need for mixed media filtration used in pretreatment. Pre so, it eliminates the need to use various chemicals. The main finding of the publication is that the use of chlorine, coagulants, and other chemicals can be essentially eliminated by the use of subsurface intake systems. Reduction in chemical use and power consumption and operation of pretreatment systems causes a reduction in carbon footprint of the seawater RO system and in potential environmental impacts. So finally, one more note on this. I'd like to dispel the notion that desalination is always a drought-proof, reliable water source. Poseidon's Carlsbad plant has been anything but reliable. In fact, on average in 2017, the plant had water supply shortfalls of, 30, of over 30% what it's supposed to deliver to the county water authority. In the first quarter of 2017, operations were at 84 percent capacity, Q2, 59 percent, Q3, 42 percent, Q4, back to 96 percent. And Poseidon's excuses for this shortfalls range from algal blooms, unscheduled shutdowns, membrane cleaning, replacing um, elevated salinity in ocean water, mechanical coupling failures. And then in their Q1 report for 2018, the plant was $3 million over budget due to what they call an unexpected en energy increase of cost. With so many factors that can go wrong, and obviously are going wrong, we need to make sure that we can trust the companies we rely on to build these plants. Desal may have a time and a place, but that's not what's being done in Carlsbad and not the way it's being proposed in Huntington Beach. And not anywhere in California where Wall Street water companies are looking to exploit our treasured coast. 
For their proposed Huntington Beach desalination plant, Poseidon is still proposing outdated intake deck technology and providing an insufficient alternatives analysis. They continue to fight the water board's seawater intake regulations and refuse to comply with the state's ocean plan desalination regulations. The Coastal Commission has a duty to protect the public trust, and that includes compliance with permits, pollution abatement, water quality protection, protection, and marine life protection. We ask you to please look into these chronic toxicity violations more closely and carefully evaluate Poseidon's trustworthiness. Do not allow our shared public resources to be compromised by a company clearly more interested in investing in influence than following the rules that you all are obliged to uphold. You have a handout in front of you with more details and citations from this presentation. And then I also included a booklet from Susan Jordan with the California Coastal Protection Network that includes a letter detailing our stance on desal. Thanks for your time and patience this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mandy. I, one question. The handouts that you gave us, does it contain this information that you just gave us? Yes. OK, thank you. And if you need any more information, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much. Uh, Gabriella.